Hey there, Reverend Sully, Erica. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's a little stuffy in here. Eric O'Sullivan, Reverend Sully, ordained on the internet. The caveat, as always, please do not burn your hands holding on to my hot takes. If you do, well, that's on you, pal. It's the movie of the week, and it's one of my favorite all-time movies. It's 1996's The Coen Brothers' magnificent Fargo. Okay, I love Fargo. Why? Fargo, to me is the example of the nigh-perfect movie. I only believe in one perfection, and that's God. And, uh, you know, perfection is um, a much ballyhooed kind of concept. Now, isn't it? And it's an opinion. So, everything should be nigh-perfect because we're humans. Everything's always flawed. Uh, but Fargo is as close as you can get to, to having perfection uh, in a movie, in my humble opinion. It's 90 minutes long. There are three acts. There are 30 minutes each. It's There's not a wasted frame. There's no wasted moments. There's no fluff in this. It's an example of how it's done. Remember as well, too, um, it won uh, two Oscars, uh, Frances McDormand for Best Actress, and um, the, the Coen brothers themselves for the uh, Best Original Screenplay. And um, it was uh, nominated for a bunch for Best Picture, for Best Director, Best Cinematography by Roger Deakins, and, um, the, and yeah, Editing by Roderick James, which was... Uh, at the time, you couldn't have uh, two people be nominated for the same thing. You couldn't have two directors. So uh, Joel was the director, and Ethan was always the contributing producer, which, in fact, Joel and Ethan were the directors. And um, Roderick Jaynes uh, was their, um, their pseudonym for when they both contributed to something. And that's a nice piece of trivia. My experience watching Fargo was um, I saw it at the movie theaters and I really haven't done this since, maybe once, but um, my, my girlfriend at the time had gone back to San Francisco to be with her family for the holidays and um, I went to the movie theaters alone. I hate going to the movie theaters alone. I, it's um, I'd rather go... It's a social experience for me. Um, I had nothing else to do. It was 1996. It was so, I mean, it was either go to the video store. We didn't have the internet as we do today. We didn't have all this streaming content to keep us occupied. So I went to the movies alone. And I saw Mystery Science Theater 3000, the movie. And after that, I snuck in to go see Fargo. <laughs> <laughs> and it just blew me away. Um, what a good movie. And it's been in my collection ever since. Um, there's just so much going on to this. We were not introduced to our hero in, until the in Marge, until the beginning of Act Two. And we have a woman in her most vulnerable stage of life being in late pregnancy and she's the one that takes down the monster the uh, Grimsveld the the um, he he's a, a mass he's a mass murderer he's a, a killer he's he's soulless um, and she's the one that ends up bringing down the bad guy and taking him in and I just think that's a somewhat overlooked piece of um, of story in this and also how she's unflappable she's met with all kinds of what we would consider today you know toxic masculinity but um, which I think is actually this different forms of aggression or just different forms of of monsters from uh, Mikey Yamagita and his inappropriate advance 
to um, William H. Macy and handling, you know, him and to also confronting uh, Shep Proudfoot, the, uh, the ex-convict uh, Native American in the garage and embracing him to get the information she needs um, to uh, Grimsveld at the end. I mean, she's just, you know, and then also the ignorance of, of, of her uh, of her partner. I'm not sure about your police work there. <laughs> you know, uh, so she's constantly and then balanced with the love of her husband, Norm. I just, you know, oh, Normie, you know, that's the, you know, you're always going to need that stamp, you know, when they raise the prices. I mean, it, it's an amazing job. I'm blessed to have the uh, the Shout Factory Steelbook. If you can, go out and get yourself a copy. It's fraught with extras, and um, it has the amazing documentary made at the time of its production, Minnesota Nice. Um, if you're a fan of Fargo, this is worth it. It also came with a poster, which is hanging up in my living room. But, yeah, Fargo. It's uh, For me, this is... Um, as close as perfection as you can get without meeting the Lord. Um, like this scene in, in particular, um, we're entering the bar there, and I had the pinball ring as a ringtone on my phone for so long that every time I hear the pinball machine in the background, I'm reaching for my phone. <laughs> How Pavlovian. But, um, but yeah, this movie is just, it's so good. Um, it's so, it's a love letter from the Coens to where they grew up in Minnesota. And, um, and I just got nothing but love for this. I'm going to go watch this again. And after my, um, after my take here, my hot take about a cold day in Minnesota. And, um, yeah, just Steve Buscemi. I mean, just... Every role, every every character in this just lands perfectly. This is a great example of how to make a movie and how it's done, and how to do it in three acts and in ninety minutes. There is there is there there is no wasted time in this. And that's all I got for today. So if you like this kind of content, well, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, give me a thumbs down. I'm a big lad. I can handle it. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section. Let's continue this conversation. And give me a subscribe if you can. I'm an ordained minister. I make uh, spirituality videos. I'm also a professional chef. I make cooking hacks so you can make nutritious, delicious, and beautiful food in the comfort of your own home and impressing your loved ones. And that's all I got for today. Thank you so very much. Cheers, namaste, and have a great day.